What is up guys and welcome back to another GeekerWatt video. In today's video, we're going to be building the Ultima RTX 3060 Ti gaming setup. In this video, I'm going to cover off our PC build of choice, take a look at all the peripherals we chose from the keyboard to the mouse, the headset and the monitor, and then test out our setup with some of the latest titles out there. Plus, I've even found a way that you guys can get your hands on a 3060 Ti right now in the current climate, so keep your eyes peeled for that one. But without any further ado, let's dive into it. Let's kick this video off by taking a look at some of our key peripheral choices and our PC build today. You guys don't need me to tell you how difficult it is to get hands on with basically any graphics card in 2021, but I might have just found a solution inspired by my friends over at the Toasty Bros. In a recent video, they explained how certain pre-builts, as long as you look for the right spec, are actually a great shout. Not only are they in stock, but they're also at pretty reasonable prices. Here in the UK, Alpha Sync are a great option, but I'll link some comparatively good options for my friends in the US and Canada in the description below. Essentially though, this is a Ryzen 5 5600X, and RTX 3060 Ti gaming PC build. And that's key to all of this. I tell you something, that's 10 out of 10 for packaging material. Our build is going to go nowhere in that box. As you guys will have seen on the channel, I'm a huge fan of the Ryzen 5 5600X. In fact, I think it's the best gaming CPU on the market right now. Of course, a Ryzen 9 will give you more performance, but if it's just gaming that you're after, it doesn't get much better than the 5600X for the price point. The 3060 Ti is also my favorite GPU to date. Uh, I've said this in numerous videos, it's in an articles on the website, it basically gives you near 3070 performance for a better price point. This pre-built, in fact, came out at around 15, 1600 pounds, equivalent to about $1,600 when you take into account sales taxes and stuff. But as I mentioned earlier, I'll link plenty of great 3060 Ti pre-builds for wherever you're watching this in the description below. In fact, AlphaSync here in the UK have a few different 3060 Ti systems available and in stock, believe it or not, and this is just one of them. Inside the system, you'll find an MSI RTX 3060 Ti, and this is a fantastic GPU for a number of reasons. Not only is it a beast at 1080p for super high frame rate gaming and 1440p high settings, but you also get support for all the fancy NVIDIA tech, reflex, broadcast, ray tracing, but perhaps more importantly, you get DLSS support. I'll showcase this in a bit more detail later on, but essentially DLSS is an AI backed resolution scaler. It's a new bit of tech that we love on the channel and have used in every single build where it's supported. What it allows your graphics card to do is render the game out at a slightly lower resolution then uses AI to upscale the image to make sure the quality loss is as minimal as possible. Why would you want to do this though? Well, the reason's quite simple. The less pixels the GPU has to initially render, the more frames per second you're gonna get. That's really important for games where you want that FPS edge. First person shooters, for example, like Call of Duty's Warzone, which supports the latest DLSS 2.0 tech for theoretically even more frame rate, is a perfect example of where every single extra frame really can help you out. That's not it though. The system System, as I say, has a Ryzen 5 5600X, 16 gigabytes of RGB Corsair memory, a custom Cooler Master 240mm liquid cooler. You also get an Asus ROG Strix ITX motherboard, so plenty of high spec on this machine with a couple of RGB fans and a 600 watt power supply. This Razer case is also pretty expensive if you were to buy it outright, so the fact that this system pre-built is so affordable is actually very impressive. What exactly is the point in an awesome PC build though if you haven't got some kick-ass peripherals to go with it. Now it's not quite a Corsair full house here as we've opted to use the Asus ROG Delta uh, for our gaming headset. This is a 7.1 surround sound headset with USB-C, some awesome RGB integration that's going to look fantastic and an awesome aesthetic which is going to match our setup really nicely. You can see here we've got these really nice ear cup designs, plenty of soft kind of leatherette as well around those ear cups to make it super comfy especially if you're using it for long gaming sessions and this quite nice Republic of Gamers branding on the headband. This is once again leatherette as well, and the whole thing is super comfortable over prolonged gaming sessions. I'll link all the components today as well in the description below for eBuyer here in the UK and Amazon over in the US and internationally. The rest of our peripherals are a full house for Corsair. Their brand new K70 RGB TKL is the 10 keyless version of their legendary K70 design. It is a little bit on the pricey side, but it's my favorite 10 keyless keyboard I've ever used. 
with dedicated media control keys at the top of the keyboard, the famous Corsair media volume scroll wheel that seemingly every other manufacturer has just copied, raised keycaps for the W, A, S and D keys included in the box, a brushed aluminium finish, uh, as well as a removable USB-C cable makes this a fantastic choice. Genuine Cherry MX switches round off a fantastic design and all in all Corsair have done a great job. It does of course support RGB as well which you can customise in Corsair IQ. I'd expect nothing less and I love this thing. Check out our other coverage of this keyboard in the card section now if you'd like to learn a little bit more. We do want to protect the desk though and give ourselves a nice surface for which to play with our keyboard and mouse. That's where the Corsair MM350 Pro comes in. Buying an extended mouse pad can just be a case of finding the cheapest one out there, spending $15 and calling it a day. Well, I'd recommend you buy this instead. With a really nice braided border that stops the mouse pad from fraying, a really even smooth surface that's great for kind of faster FPS titles, and a cool Corsair design, it's going to make the setup look awesome. Don't cheap out here, buy one that's going to last and save yourself the headache later on. Before rounding off the peripherals, I just wanted to show you guys this. Uh, it's the Habit RGB headphone stand. I picked it up for like $15, £15. Pounds. It's got a couple of USB ports on. They're only USB 2, but they're useful for charging devices or plugging in a mouse, for example. Also has a headphone port and customizable RGB. And that's going to work really nicely with our Asus ROG Delta gaming headset. That's just going to sit quite comfortably on the top. Finally then, the last of the peripherals today is the gaming mouse. And I've opted to go for the Corsair Qatar Pro XT. This is a really lightweight mouse that's capable of up to 18,000 DPI, weighing in at just 73 grams. What's more impressive than all of that though, is its price point. This thing is stupidly affordable. In fact, it's one of the cheapest gaming mice out there right now. And I don't really understand why, because it's fantastic. You get this really lightweight kind of paracord cable design, which makes resistance when moving the mouse as low as physically really is possible. As I say, that 18,000 DPI sensor, and it tracks really nicely, really quickly, really smoothly, super consistent, and it's better than any other budget option out there. This thing is so cheap, it's an absolute steal. Just go and buy one. You're probably gonna love it. Which leaves us with only one more key element to add to the gaming setup. And that is of course the monitor. This is the Asus TUF VG279. It's a 27.9 inch uh, gaming monitor with a few cool tricks up its sleeve. Not only does it support NVIDIA G-Sync, great for our 3060 Ti system, but it also has a refresh rate that overclocks up to 280 hertz. That's right, this monitor overclocks to nearly 300 hertz, meaning it really can saturate hundreds of frames per second. Ideal for those fast reaction time first person shooters. Now this is all well and good, but completely pointless if the system is only running games at 80 frames per second. You may as well just have picked up a 144 hertz monitor, but even that would be overkill. Obviously in games like Overwatch or CSGO or Valorant, which are really easy to run, we're going to have no problems. But in Call of Duty Warzone, one of the most popular first person shooters out there right now, DLSS is going to come in really handy. That tech I mentioned earlier, the AI backed resolution scaler, is going to prove super useful and give us a 50 to 60% FPS upside in some scenarios, allowing us to take advantage of all that extra frame rate. Before we do that though, we need to plug up our setup, get the system booted up and uh, jump into some games, I think. Exciting stuff. Great success. We're just gonna finish off configuring Windows, wait for that to finish and then play some games on our setup to see how the 3060 Ti and 280 Hertz monitor perform. Awesome stuff. So it's now the next day. We've gone ahead and booted the setup up and I want to see how it performs in some of the biggest titles out there. First up is Call of Duty's Warzone. This of course has a brand new map and a brand new season out and now supports DLSS 2.0. So we'll see if that can help us get a bit extra frame rate and of course drive the insane refresh rate of the Asus monitor, which I'll link alongside everything else in the description below. I'll pop the settings used for this game uh, on your screen now with DLSS set to quality and then in a minute we'll turn DLSS off and see how much our FPS drops. There's also a little FPS graph in the top left corner, highly requested by you guys I might add to keep your eyes on that one. Straight off the bat it looks like we're landing Boneyard and we're sitting around about 130 frames per second at the moment so let's see how that kind of develops as we get closer and further into the game. 
So as I say, still sitting around 120 FPS. We actually managed to get up to 150 FPS with DLSS enabled, DLSS 2.0 of course. But what about now if we turn DLSS off? So we're just going to do that by turning DLSS off, applying those settings, and then I find it's a good idea to restart the game just to make sure those settings properly take effect. And we'll just give it a quick double check that it has indeed applied our changes to DLSS is off, and we'll jump back into a game uh, of Battle Royale quads and see what kind of impact that has. Oh my god, my whole teammate are all, they're all in just random places. I don't know what to do. Let's go over here. Let's go over to the Willy Gostilla and see what impact no DLSS has on the frame rate when we actually land into the map properly. It's quite therapeutic, just sort of floating in and out the trees. I feel like I'm a drone or something. Or a bird. Not ideal. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, Willy, I'm on you, I'm on my way. I need your help. Really do with a bit of a gun right now. That's, that'll do us. That wasn't a gun. Now that's a little bit better. We've got a shot that we could really do with something a bit more substantial than that. So that appears to have reduced our FPS by about 12 frames per second, which lines up roughly with what we saw across the board. At higher resolutions, the performance improvement from DLSS is a bit more pronounced. And we'll pop some comparisons on your screen now, some side-by-sides that really demonstrate that. At 4K in particular, we saw some strong frame rate improvements when enabling DLSS 2.0. Oh, though it's worth noting that the Ryzen 5 5600X probably is bottlenecking us just a little bit here. At 1440p specifically, we saw a 15 FPS jump with DLSS enabled versus it being off, and the 90 and 99th percentile numbers were also strong for that as well, showing a decent increase. Just for testing purposes as well, we also ran some numbers on a 3070 with a Ryzen 5600X and saw around 12 frames per second here at 1440p in terms of an increase and around 10 frames per second at 1080p. We'll also zoom right in on one of our comparisons to show the visual impact, if any, that DLSS has. DLSS 2.0 on quality particularly is pretty much unnoticeable, which is a big improvement on the last gen tech. Of course, tune DLSS up to performance and the resolution scaling tech gets more aggressive. And while your frame rate will rise, you will notice a bigger visual impact. Well, that's Call of Duty's Warzone covered off. What about some of the other titles you guys might want to play on this system? Well, Apex Legends at 1080p was a really impressive showing. You're going to be sitting around about 217 frames per second, all of which really helps in terms of your gaming performance. Fortnite, of course, was also strong at 1080p competitive settings with everything tuned down to low, the render distance set to far, and DLSS uh, enabled as well, in the region of around about 360. 62 frames per second. All in all, this setup is really strong for playing those high action, high FPS titles on a high refresh rate monitor in 2021. And that just about wraps it up. If you enjoyed this video, you'd like to check out any of the components we covered off, they'll be linked in the description below. A big thanks to AlphaSync and NVIDIA for making this video possible. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.